Hello! In this video, we're going to look at some problems from the Canadian Math Kangaroo Contest. And these problems are all going to be about different sorts of shapes. If you're in grades 3 or 4, then this is a great video to help get some practice for the contest. Now, a really great idea is when you're watching this, after I read out the problem, before I tell you the solution, try pausing the video and see if you can figure out the answer on your own. That is the best way to get the most practice out of this video. For our first question, we're told that the five pieces below, so A, B, C, D, or E, out of one of these, uh, one of them can be squished together with this darkened shape on the right to form a rectangle. So remember, a rectangle is something like a square, uh, but we allow some of the sides could be longer. The top side and the bottom side have to be the same length. And the right side and the left side, those have to be the same length. Well, if I need to add some squares to the shape to make sure the top and the bottom are the same length, let's see how many squares do we have on the bottom? One, two, three. So there should be three squares on the top, too. So I'm going to draw in two more squares there. And how many squares do I have on the left side? Because I know the left and right have to have the same number of squares. So there's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I should also have five squares on the right side of this shape. So let's draw in a couple more squares to make sure that we have five. And we want the whole thing to be filled in as a rectangle, so I want to make sure that the squares in the middle are there too. So now if I were to put these blue squares in, well it looks like we have a rectangle now. The top and bottom are the same and the left and the right are the same. But does this shape match up with any of the five we have below? Well, let's see. There are one, two different rows of blocks. And the only one of those shapes that has two different rows of blocks is C. But are these the same? If we count up, one of our rows has one, two, three blocks but none of the rows in C have three blocks. So this can't be right. What's going on here? Well, maybe we need to add an extra row somewhere. So maybe I could put another row of five blocks beside this shape. Now I have one, two, three columns. So that could be any one of these other shapes here. And what are the lengths of these? I have one, two, three, four, five on the very right. The next one has one, two, three, four blocks going down. And on the left, there's one, two, three blocks. But again, we're kind of running into some trouble because none of these other options have rows where one has three blocks, one has four blocks, and one has five blocks. Okay, well, we tried adding a row on the side of it. What if we tried adding a row on the top of it? What if we put another three blocks up top? So now we have three rows, and one of the rows has just one block. One of them has one, two, three, four blocks. And one of them has one, two, three, four, five blocks. Do we find anything that matches up with that? Well, look at B here. One of the rows has one block. The next one beside it has one, two, three, four blocks. And the last one has one, two, three, four, five. Awesome. This must be the missing piece. So our answer for this question is B. For our next question, we're told that Carol is playing with two equilateral triangular cards. So equilateral, this just means that all the sides of these triangles are equal. They have the same length. 
and we're told that Carol puts one of the cards beside or on top another part of the other, both on a piece of paper. She then draws on the paper around them following the contour. So this word contour, that just means we're going along the outside of the shape. If you can see where my purple pen is moving right now, that is on the outside of the triangle, or sometimes we call it the contour. She cannot get only one of the shapes below. Which one is it? So what we're trying to do in this question is figure out which of these five shapes below, A, B, C, or D, or E, can we not get if we tried smushing the triangles together? Well, let's just go through all the shapes and see if we can make them all. So starting off with A, it sort of looks like we had two upside down triangles on top of each other. Let's use our, the only tool we have here, our pencil, to make some drawings to help us think about this problem. If I took one triangle like this, and I place the other triangle like this underneath it, and when I fill them in, you can see that I get something that looks like A. So that one should be possible. If I make a line here, B looks like we just took two triangles and smushed them together on their bottoms. So it looks like B is a shape that we can also make. It's pretty easy for C as well to see these two different triangle shapes. I could take one triangle like this and just place the next triangle on top. And then once I fill them in, you can see, yeah, I get something that looks like C. So, so far we've been able to make all of these triangles. D looks a little bit tricky, but we can also see that we have two triangle shapes here. Another way to see it is if I put one triangle here first, and then I put the other triangle over here, and I fill them in, it looks like I can make D. So what we've done, we've gone through the first four shapes, and we found that, yeah, we can make all of these shapes with the two triangles. So our answer has to be E. There's no other possibility. We got all the others. So E has to be the one that's impossible to get. So that is our answer. For a third question, we're told that two square patterns, X, so that's this square I'm underlining here with the purple, and Y, which is this other square I'm underlining with the purple, are made of black and white squares so that they complement each other. Now, what that means is that the squares in X are the opposite colors of the squares in Y. So if we look at this top left corner of X, that's all filled in black. But the top left corner of Y is the opposite. It's not filled in. Same thing if we look at the top right corner of X, we see that it's not filled in. But then in Y, it's the opposite. It is filled in. And this pattern continues for all of the squares in X and Y. So the question says, if we look at these five squares below, A, B, C, D, and E, which of these in the answers is the complemented pattern of the pattern G? So that just means it follows the same rules between X and Y. That means we're looking for the square that has all the opposite colors of G. So if I look at the top left square of G, that is not filled in. So I want to look at all the shapes that have the top left corner that is filled in because we're looking for the opposite square. Well, A's top left corner that's not filled in, so eh, we don't want that one. B's top left corner is filled in. Now we can't be sure this is our answer yet, but it might be. So let's move on and look at the others. It looks like C's top left corner is also filled in. Hmm, so our answer could be B or C. 
Let's keep checking the rest, though. For D, we see its top left corner is not filled in, so eh, we don't want to take that one. And for E, its top left corner is also filled in, and so, well, that might be our answer too. So we still can't really be sure, but at least we've narrowed down the choices. So instead of just looking at a single square, let's see if we look at this entire top piece. What's the pattern we have here? With G, the first square on the left is not filled in. The next square is not filled in. The third square is filled in, and the fourth square is not filled in. So the opposite of this would be the first square is filled in, and the second square is filled in. The third square is not filled in, and the fourth square is filled in. So out of B, C, and D, do any of these, do all of these have that same pattern? Well, if we look, yeah, B has the first two filled in, the third square is not, and the fourth square is. C and E also follow this same pattern. Hmm, so we're going to have to look a little harder to tell the difference between these. Let's move down to the second row of G. For the second row of G, the first two squares are filled in, and the second two squares are not filled in. So the opposite pattern of this should be that the first two squares are not filled in, and the second two squares are filled in. Let's look at our three shapes below to see if any of these have that same pattern. Well, in B, the first two squares are not filled in, and the second two squares are filled in. Well, that's exactly what we're looking for, so it still could maybe be B. But now, look at C. This first square is filled in, and that's a problem. That's not what we're looking for, so eh, we can toss C out of here. Hopefully we can toss out E, but if we look, the first two squares are not filled in, and the next two squares are filled in. So, it looks like E is still possible, and we're still not sure if it's B or E. Now maybe we could figure it out from the third row, but if we take a quick look at B and E for a second, we see that both B and E have the same third row. So we're not going to be able to tell them apart from that, but the bottom row of B is different from the bottom row of E. So if we figure out what the bottom row should look like, we should be able to figure out the answer. So finally, if we look at the bottom row of G, the first three squares are not filled in and only the last one is filled in. That means the opposite of this, the thing that we're looking for, is to have the first three squares all being filled in, and only the last square is not filled in. And so finally, we see that that's just not happening, and B, our answer has to be E. It has exactly what we're looking for. So that's our final answer, E. For the fourth question, we're asked which figure is impossible that means we can't make it. Which figure is impossible to make with these two domino pieces? So we need to use these two domino pieces on the right. So again, I think the best thing to do is just to start going through and trying to see if we can make these pieces. Well, A already looks pretty similar, right? If we just moved these two pieces a little bit closer together, we can see that that's the same picture of A. So, eh, our answer is not going to be A, because we can make A. What about B? So, one way we can proceed with this question is actually a great way to see how to use your actual test paper as a tool. With part B here, we want to see if we can turn uh, this other domino upside down, and we want to make sure that the dots go down towards the right. So I can actually take my paper and I'll turn my paper to see what happens when this domino gets turned upside down. And look, we get exactly what we need. The dots go down from the left to the right. 
So for B, we can make the shape if we just turn this domino upside down. So we know that uh, A can't be the answer because we can make it with the two dominoes and B can't be the answer because we can make it with the two dominoes. What about C? Well, we have these two ones on top of each other, so we're going to have to turn one of the dominoes sideways. So now one of our questions is, well, if I take this domino here with the twos and I turn it sideways so the one is on the left, does it look like this? Is it going up to the right? And again, let's actually turn our paper. So if we turn our paper and we see that, yeah, we can match it up. It's going up and to the right. Uh, now, what about the bottom row? We need the 1 and the 3 going up and to the right. So if we look over here, what happens when we actually turn our paper? Yeah, I get the 1 and the 3 going up to the right. So we can definitely make C as well, so that can't possibly be our answer. Uh, what about D? Now the dot is on the other side, uh, so I could try turning it uh, the other direction and let's see if the dots the two dots go up and to the right so if I turn this one over yep that's exactly what we need okay but what about the bottom row well we've already seen from the way that we saw that we could put C together uh, that we can make those dominoes line up so definitely we can make D and that means uh, that our final answer must be E, because we were able to make all the other dominoes A, B, C, and D. For our final question, we're told that Kanga wants to renovate the floor of her kitchen. She only has the type of sh tile shown on the right. So that's this tile I'm circling over here. Hence, she cannot arrange one of the patterns below. Which one? So again, we're trying to figure out which one of these patterns we can't make by using a combination of these tiles and sticking them next to each other. Now we could go through and just try all of these patterns one by one, like we did in some of the previous questions, and that definitely will help us get to the right answer, but this one has a little trick to it that if you pay close attention to the shapes, we can actually solve it pretty quickly. Notice that this tile we're supposed to use, the line goes from one corner to another corner. The line does not bump into any sides. It's only the corners of the sides. And if you notice in D, this is a problem because the lines in the middle of each of these squares, these are bumping just into the sides. They're not actually hitting any of the corners. And so we can actually see right away in this one that D is our answer. We can't make this because we're only using the tile on the right uh, which looks different from all of the tiles being used in D. So that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for sticking around and trying out all the problems. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can visit mathkangaroo.ca or send an email to info at mathkangaroocanada.com.